Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. You can think of it as an introductory college level course. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video, which is part two of methanol, I'm going to talk about methanol and what happens to it during distillation. So let's get started. So you have your fermented wash and you're going to throw it into your still. During the distillation process, distillate is essentially collected in three portions. Call them the heads, the hearts, and the tails. Technically, you will probably collect more fractions, but at the end, when you decide you're going to blend, you will have a head section, a heart section, and a tail section. You'll keep most of the hearts, maybe a little bit of heads and tails, depending on what you're making. Maybe none of the heads or tails, and you just essentially toss the rest, or you can do other things with them afterwards. There are other terms used, though. Four shots. Spirit cut. And faints. These are three other terms used for the same three cuts. The top terms were coined on mainland Scotland. Where exactly? I don't really think anyone knows. And then these bottom three terms were coined in the Inner Hebrides Islands of Scotland. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about four shots as if it's a fourth cut at the very beginning. I think what happened is they heard somebody speaking authoritatively mention four shots as if it was the first cut and they assumed that they were talking about these three terms and four shots being a fourth term. Similar to feints and tails, where somebody says they threw out the feints, they might have assumed they were talking about tails and heads together as one, but feints really just means the tails. It doesn't really matter which set of terms you use, but if you're going to start talking about them, you have to make sure everyone knows that when you say heads, you mean the first cut or you mean the second cut of four. I personally just use heads, hearts, and tails, and that's how I'm going to talk about cuts in this video and all the other videos. So the common myth is that methanol shows up in the heads when distilling. You collect the first X milliliters of four shots or heads, and you throw it out and you've gotten rid of the methanol. I say that's a myth because most people who are talking about this are typically talking about using a pot still. And it turns out that when pot stilling, methanol actually comes out in the tails. And I'll explain why. Or I should say the majority of the methanol comes out in the tails when you're pot stilling, but the rest of it does actually get smeared across the heads and the hearts. So a lot of people will be saying, why is methanol coming out in the tails when methanol boils at 64.7 degrees Celsius or 148.5 degrees. Oops, that should be an F Fahrenheit. And that's because this is just the boiling point of a pure methanol, nothing else in it, pure methanol. There's a lot of chemistry going on inside the boiler. Here's my work of art. The main thing going on in there is intermolecular force, a van der Waals force called hydrogen bonding. So in hydrogen bonding, we'll start with water. We have our oxygen molecule, and then we will have two hydrogen molecules. And because of the electronegativity of oxygen, a 
what's called a dipole moment forms. And that's essentially one side of the molecule becomes more charged than the other. And in this case, the oxygen side becomes more negative and the hydrogen sides become more positive. This leads to these molecule or these atoms wanting to bond with opposite charges. So if there's another water molecule nearby, which there invariably is, there will be a bond force, hydrogen bond force between these two. That's what pulls these molecules tightly together. And it also is the reason for water's surface tension. When something else like methanol is present, let's do uh, green for carbon. So we have our methanol here. There will in fact be a hydrogen bond between this oxygen and that hydrogen. Ethanol undergoes a similar bond with its oxygen for its from its alcohol group, but due to the presence of this methanol here, it sort of disrupts this bond. So methanol doesn't form an azeotrope with water, whereas ethanol does form an azeotrope due to this bond. What does this have to do with methanol and distillation? Well, because of the strength of this bond, this water is going to try and keep the methanol trapped down in this mixture. What this hydrogen bond is doing to the methanol is in effect forcing the methanol to have a higher or an apparently higher molecular weight and a lower volatility because more energy is needed to first break this bond and then cause vaporization of the methanol. So what happens is the boiling point of the methanol is then in effect pushed up closer to water's boiling point. And at the same time, what that does is cause methanol to majority come out the tail section because its boiling point is so much higher or its apparent boiling point is so much higher now and there is now enough energy because you've hit the tail section you've been putting in heat energy in there's now enough energy to break this bond and the methanol can start coming out in larger amounts now it comes out all the time even in the heads and the hearts and that's due to two things. Some of the methanol will be sitting on the surface and there will be just enough energy for that methanol to fling off as a vapor. Some of it will condense on the surface of the still and drip back down. Some of it will just come back up and out. Another thing that will happen is you'll have methanol and water mixing on the surface of the still and a bit of passive reflux will be happening. So the vapor coming up from the liquid will have a higher concentration of methanol and I'll get into why the vapor will have a higher concentration than a liquid in uh, another video on vapor liquid equilibriums. When this higher concentration vapor hits the surface of the still, the condensed liquid will then have the same concentration as that vapor did. So if there was, if there was 0.5%, which is way too high, but 0.5% methanol here. And when it gets into vapor form, it goes up to say 2%. Then this condensed liquid will have 2% methanol. And then when the vapors boil it off, that percentage may jump up to 20%. And if it condenses, it may increase again. This is passive reflux. 
and then eventually it'll come out as this smeared line across the heads and the hearts from the very beginning. And uh, this is why I don't recommend rerunning tails from a pot still. I mean, you can if you want, it isn't worth it to me because that's where most of the methanol is going to be. And if you keep collecting tails, you're just going to be increasing the amount of methanol that's going to be in that run when you have all those tails together. There also typically isn't a lot of ethanol in there in the first place. I just don't see it as worth it. Let's look at the column still now. It works a little bit differently. So similar to how the passive reflux was concentrating, was increasing the amount of methanol present, same thing happened in your column. I'm gonna use some very rough diagram with plates. So you have that 5% down in the bottom, or 0.5% as a liquid. The vapor becomes 2%, 2%. So that means the liquid on this first plate is going to be 2% ethanol, or methanol, sorry. The vapor, say, jumps up to 20%. That means, that means it's 20% methanol and only 80% water. Move up to the next plate, it could have jumped up to, say, 60%. So each time you go up the plate, there's going to be less and less water and more and more methanol. And you're gonna hit a point where the hydrogen bonding isn't strong enough to keep a majority of that methanol in place. And that's why you end up with a curve that looks like that with the heads, hearts, and tails. Where a majority of the methanol is in the heads and the rest of it is just smeared across the hearts and the tails. So yeah, when you are using a column, still a reflux column, methanol will move towards the heads cut closer to its pure boiling point. Some of it will come out early in the heads before the boiling point of pure methanol, and that's because methanol can form an azeotrope with acetone. And the azeotrope Boiling point for that is 55 degrees Celsius or 131 Fahrenheit. Some will come out at the boiling point. Some will come out after the boiling point in terms of the majority of it. And then once you actually move into the hearts, a majority of the methanol will be gone and it will just, small amounts will smear across the heads and the tails because hydrogen bonding is still going on quite strongly in the wash, in the boiler. And it's gonna wanna hold back as much of that methanol as it can. It'll drag the methanol all the way across to the tails. And that's what happens to methanol during distillation. I hope this alleviates any fears you might have about methanol. I hope this wasn't too complicated. If you liked the video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe and click that bell for a notification of new videos. If you want me to do a video on a specific topic, leave a comment or send an email and we can discuss it. Thanks for watching and have a great week.